Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today. I know that I just hit 12 o'clock on the dot, so I'll probably wait just another minute or so for a few more attendees to be able to come in, and then I can start introducing everyone, and then we can begin our presentation. So we'll just wait another minute or two to begin. Alrighty, well, we can definitely get started. So welcome to today's webinar as we introduce the adoption of the multi-tiered system of supports model at the Bancroft School. My name is Jill Marshall and I will be moderating today's session. Alongside me is the team who developed this model tailored to meet all of the unique needs of the students at our school. Starting with Pat Semt, interim principal, Chelsea Corley, senior clinical director, Missy Simmons, Social Work Director, Nicholas Forbord, Director of Behavioral Support, and John Bernard, Director of Curricular Structure and Training. I just want to remind everyone throughout the webinar today to stay muted, but feel free to have your camera on or off. If you do have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to utilize the chat function at the bottom of the screen, and we'll go over the questions at the end of the session. Uh, you will also receive a follow-up email after the event with the presentation slides, as well as an on-demand recording for today, a condensed version of the MTSS model, and any other questions we may not have gone over at this time. So without further ado, we can kind of get started. And Pat, I will let you begin. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. And welcome, and thank you to everyone joining us today. We're happy to have you here. And excited to talk to you about um, our new Bancroft School School model. A um, couple of things that we'll be covering today. Two two things primarily. Um, first, the overview of the Bancroft School model, and second, the changes to how we describe our mandates. Um, so before I turn it over to Nick, just a couple of things I'd I'd like to cover. Talk to you about the Bancroft difference and what what that means. Um, so here at Bancroft, we have a spectrum of services available at, at the school for all of our students. Um, it covers a wide variety of different things from in academic instruction, vocational support, uh, as well as re related services. <clears throat> it's important to know that it's a progression of supports that are available to all of our students. And um, we we want to meet them where they're at, right? So we want to make sure that we're we're providing them the resources and the supports that they need um, to become the best model of themselves and to be as independent as as much as possible. Um, one key thing that I I really want to emphasize about this what what you're hearing about today, um, there's nothing being lost, like. All of the great things that we've done over the years, um, none of that is going away. This is just an additional supplement um, support to what we're currently doing. It's going to be enmeshed and interwoven with all of what, what we do here at, at the Bancroft School. So again, can't emphasize enough that nothing is, is being lost. Um, real quick, before we, we get into the meat and potatoes about all of this, um, there's three levels of support 
that we have that that you're you're going to learn more about to, today. Um, if we can get to that slide. <clears throat> So the three levels, we have tier one, and that would be the, the bottom level or our base, um, also our uni universal standard of supports, right? And this is where we, you know, see like every student starting. Um, it's what is provided to, to every single student. And then from there, we have tier two and tier three. As you, you go up these supports, um, or up, up these tiers, they get more involved, um, become more individualized for our students. And as you see on the slide, tier two, um, we create smaller group lessons, therapies, more formal consultation. Um, and th this creates better resources and supports for our students. Tier three is for our most intensive, highly individualized um, supports that we are, are needed for some of our students. And the thing to keep in mind about these three tiers, right? Um, we, we can go back and forth between the, these tiers, um, although there's very you know strict parameters and we meet regularly um, as teams. Um, we, we come together, we have formal conversations and we're reviewing these tiers and the supports for the, the betterment of our students. So it's very fluid. It, it can be fluid. Um, it, we can move back and forth between these tiers at any given time. Um, it's really all determined by our students' needs at any given time, um, right? And sometimes students need more support, more services than, than others. And with this model, we have the ability to, to do that. So it's flexible. It's fluid, and our goal is to find the, the successful balance between support and independence for each of our students. So I hope that makes sense, but at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Nick. He's gonna dive into it a little deeper and give more details about these three different levels of supports that we have for our students. Thanks, Great. Nick. Thanks, Pat, appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Nick Favor. I'm the Director of Behavioral Health at the Bancroft School, and I'm excited to talk about PBIS. The Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports, PBIS for short, is a new way to describe the ABA services that we provide here at the Bancroft School. As Pat mentioned, rest assured that we will continue to offer the same ABA services that we do today, but our hope is with this new model, will provide greater clarity around the spectrum of services that we offer. Those services are gonna range from our tier one, which is gonna include baked in support, like specialized training for staff, classroom management systems, and motivating students to demonstrate pro-social behavior, to our tier two, which will include more general ABA strategies that focus on richer motivating systems and minimizes the impact of challenging behavior. All the way up to our tier three, which includes highly individualized interventions that are informed by an FBA and focus on reducing challenging behavior that has become a barrier to learning. This tiered approach provides more structure and transparency around the variety of ABA supports that we offer at Bancroft. Next slide. Thank you. In addition to the tiered approach that I just discussed, all students will be participating in a school-wide initiative that focuses on our new school rules. And you can see them there, be safe, be kind, be flexible, and try your best. Teachers will begin to embed lessons focused on teaching and modeling our new school rules. Students will be provided with opportunities to demonstrate our school rules and will be acknowledged with praise and provided a Bancroft buck, which you can see on the slide here. These Bancroft bucks can be used to purchase rewards from our new school reward store that we're calling the Buck Stop. The buck stop will include a variety of toys, fidgets, snacks, and in addition to these rewards, 
Students can also use their Bancroft bucks to purchase special privileges, such as access to technology or walks throughout the school. And those will all be facilitated in the classroom by the teachers. The idea here is to really emphasize the pro-social behavior at all levels of programming in the Bancroft School. Starting now, you'll begin to see and hear PBIS language in IEP meetings and IDTs that provide a tier assignment based on the level of ABA support that's being recommended. We're excited to adopt this new PBIS model and join the thousands of schools across the country already using this approach. We can't wait to share more and update you as we progress throughout this next school year. Um, so that's our new tiered system for PBIS and our school rules. More to come. Um, up next, we have Chelsea, and she's going to talk to us about our new related service model. Chelsea? Thank you, Nick. And next slide, please, Jill. So Nick uh, went over PBIS, and that's one of the dimensions of our MTSS, or multi-tiered system of supports model. We actually have two more dimensions that round out how we provide supports to the whole student, right? So one of those dimensions, as Nick went over, is PBIS. And then I'm going to talk to you about the other dimensions, one being related services, and uh, I'll follow that with a, a review of our social emotional learning progression. So for our related services, much of this looks and feels the same as it's been. But one of the things that we wanted to review with you, um, in particular ahead of many of the IEPs coming up this season, is that there might be some different terminology that you hear, and we want you to be able to easily orient to that um, as you're in those team meetings. So the standard support for related services, be it speech, OT, or PT, is integrated program support. This means that even if a student doesn't receive group therapy or individualized therapy, that student's teacher still has access to speech, occupational, and physical therapists for a consultation. So if I'm a teacher and my class is so wiggly and I really am feeling like maybe there's a different way for them to regulate from a sensory perspective during class, I can ask, reach out to one of the OTs that I have access to, to provide that integrated program support. Hey, what would you recommend for my classroom? And then I'll take those recommendations, try them and see if that makes you know some, some needed improvements. Tier one at that level, that integrated program support is non-mandated. It's as Nick said, it's baked in. It's part of what we do. It's available to all students. It's one of those things that looks a little different here than it might in a, in a traditional district program. Some of our students though need more than that, right? And so should they need uh, group therapy or mandated consultation? In other words, consultation that is very specifically student focused, right? So. Maybe a student doesn't have individualized or group therapies, but we're starting to wonder if maybe we need to look at that, or maybe that student needs a little bit of extra ideas or, or support to kind of help them um, successfully navigate uh, stairs or navigate um, sensory needs in the classroom. The team will meet and we'll, we'll discuss a tier two, right? And we'll look at getting consultation added as a mandate, some, some goals there and, and likely, uh, and or group therapy. But some students need more than that, right? Some students really need that individualized um, level of related services, right? Individual speech therapy, individual OT, um, and this of course also is mandated, right? So that would be what tier three related service looks like. So again, it's very, very similar to everything you've seen and heard before. I think the biggest difference here is that our tier one level is integrated program support. And we wanna be really clear on what that is. That's just sort of extra Bancroft goodness that is part of our model. And um, you know when and where that's not enough, then we, we look at Larry and on some additional supports. Next slide, please, Jill. And the third and final dimension of our MTSS structure is related to social emotional learning. This is uh, an element that we, we think is really important to the overall development of our students. And um, that begins at a tier one level with social emotional learning curriculum for all students. 
It may be differentiated, right, uh, to ensure that all of our students are able to access that com content, but social emotional learning is a part of our overall curriculum. Similar to related services, where there is also at a tier one level integrated program support by our clinicians, that's also in effect here in tier one. So in that in that case, our integrated program support is provided by our school psychologists or school counselors. So they can pop in, make some suggestions uh, to uh, how the social emotional learning curriculum is being provided, potentially suggesting additional um, activities that might be really relevant to a specific classroom or group of students. Um, so that baked in, right? That's part of our standard supports. For some students, no, they need more and their social emotional development is really important to their ability to access education in a meaningful way. For some of those students who need that much more, we've identified uh, specific classrooms that have an enhanced focus on social emotional learning. So the curriculum is that much more prevalent throughout their day. And when and where it's needed, uh, our school psychologist will support our team in creating a social emotional support plan. And that might have uh, goals associated with it, uh, counseling mandates and so forth, just depending on what that student needs. And it might be, again, like group therapy, right? Um, that's a part of that. Some of our students need more. And when and where they do, that's where we have our tier three. And this is for likely a student who may experience um, mental health crises and things like that. And so we want to make sure that we have a plan for how to support that student in that moment. And so that's where our social emotional intervention plan may come in place. That certainly will have goals associated with it where we're outlining what coping skills, what what do we need to teach? What do we need to provide the student in order for them to, to not have to stay in tier three, right? Ideally, we want all of our students to be as independent as possible. Um, so, you know, we don't want to live in a tier three if we don't need to, right? We want our, our instruction and our services to be effective so that we can move towards independence. But when and where we need it, we have that progression. And, and for SEL, it would look like um, it may have enhanced staffing, as well as a uh, intervention plan. Next slide, please. So before we close out, all of these things are just great ideas if we can't actually run them, right? So one of the things that we established as we clarified what these progression of services needed to look like is to really create the space for our teams to team, for them to, to know when, where, and how to come together to make sure that we have strong consistency with all of the supports that we're providing. This begins with classroom level clinics. These run regularly throughout the year and every staff member in a classroom is in attendance. And the goal of those meetings is just to check in on those universal supports. Hey, are we doing everything we said we needed to do from a universal support standpoint? The team goes through, they take data um, on, on how they, they're doing and providing that, and they review that and they coach each other through what they need to do as a group to make sure that those standard supports are everything that we need them to be. Sometimes we need to focus on the needs of a specific student, and that's where we have student level clinics. And these can you know, be called by a teacher, it might be called by a clinician. And that's where the uh, the school team gathers to, to discuss a specific student. We might look at the tiers and we might discuss, hey, do we need to have an IDT? Maybe we need to pull the parents in and have an, a, a broader conversation about how we support them and discuss, you know, any additional modifications that might need to happen. Do we need to make some adjustments to the IEP? Um, and sometimes it's just, a, a quick little conversation like, hey, you know, I tried this visual today and he really responded to it. So let's use that across um, across environments. So sometimes they're very minor. And then other times this student level clinic lets us know, do we need to do something more, something um, more intensive and, and really bring the whole broad team together? And that that would then be the, the interdisciplinary team meeting. 
that would be a time where we have, if, if the student uh, lives with us residentially, the residential team would be a part of it, parents would be a part of it. And, you know, we discuss what we need to do as a broad team um, to make some adjustments or to move that student either towards independence or more support. Um, anything I left out with that? No, I think that's, okay. that covers it. All right. So this concludes all of the new content we have for you. Um, if you've been uh, asking questions in the chat, I believe, Jill, you're going to uh, kind of let us know if there's some questions that we can answer. I do not see any questions in the chat right now. Is anyone that's attending have any thoughts, comments, or questions that kind of came up when um, a Bancorp team was chatting about the new model? Hi, this is Chris Chamberlain. I don't know if anybody else chimed in before I did. Am I good to ask my questions? Absolutely. Sorry, I'm not on camera. I apologize. Um, but I did have a Optional. couple. Um, I didn't get a chance to review the deck prior to this introduction. I don't know if you guys even had sent it out. But um, my first question is, so will the new IEPs determine what tier our child will be in? Or have you guys already kind of figured that out? And then when we have our up upcoming IEP meetings, that will be discussed. I can take that. So we have started to, ahead of the IEP season, start to kind of roughly put in based on sort of the supports a student currently has um, a starting point for what we think their tiers are. But it's certainly going to be a conversation, right, that we have in, IE, in the IEP process. And one point of clarification is a student will be in a different tier in, in each individual dimension, right? So your student may be um, just doing an incredible job from a PBIS perspective and doesn't really need a lot of additional supports there. So they may be a, a tier one uh, student in, in PBIS, whereas in SEL, they may be tier two. And in related services, they might be tier one PT, tier two SLP, tier two OT. Does that make sense? So they might be in a different place in, in the different dimension. And where you'll see this in the IEP as, as sort of the team comes together around some decision making on um, what level of support is needed is in the um, in the mandate section and, and related services, you'll see uh, language like uh, tier two group therapy for OT. So it'll be sort of like all one line. So it, it should be pretty easy to, to uh, orient to. Does that answer your question, Chris? Yeah, so just to clarify, so you're, the overall student isn't going to be like tier one, two, three. Yes. The tiers will be based on each specific item. That's exactly. Whether that be social. Sorry, I forget the, all the different different names. Okay. Places. So along those same lines, my follow-up question to that is, will there be, will there be an effort to have children with in similar tiers in the same classroom, or will the classrooms still remain the same based on that student? So overall, uh, the 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 kids won't be moving around based on on tiers in the different dimensions. The only place where that's a little bit different is with regard to SEL. If a student really needs that sort of enhanced social emotional learning support, we do have certain classrooms that have enhanced curriculum embedded in that. If something comes up mid year, we can kind of discuss as a as an IEP team, you know, how best to serve those needs that have arisen, and if if we need to look at making a classroom change at that point, or if we just need to uh, enhance the curriculum in their current classroom. So that that's sort of a, a conversation we can have should we need to come to that. But generally speaking, student stays put in the classroom and their supports sort of come and go depending on what they need and what they're, they're ready for. All right. Um, and then the next part of my question is, is that we talked about the IEP. Like when we have our next IEP meeting, meeting for for our son Julian, will they be having that conversation then? Or is that going to happen more in the future? Like, will we know what tier our kid is in for each specific section? I, I don't know. You, I you will, yes, you will hear tier language throughout the IEP um, in, the, in the next IEP. That's why we wanted to try to, to have this moment here together to kind of familiarize you with the language that you might be hearing. Perfect. All right. Makes sense to me. Thank you. 
Yep, you bet. And Chris, I just want to add to after the event today, a follow up email will be going out of the recorded presentation as well as the slides and a handout of the MTSS model. Um, just for your reference for any upcoming meeting as well, we'll have everything kind of ready to go for uh, all the parents who signed up for today's webinar. Perfect. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are there any other questions that uh, kind of arise while we were chatting? I don't I don't see anything else. I wanted to thank everyone that was able to hop on and, and uh, to be a part of this. And um, again, you know, this is just an effort to to communicate some of the language that you may be hearing. Um, we it's really important to, you know, the entire Bancroft School team here that um, that you are as informed as possible and that. Um, <laughs> It looks like maybe Megan, you have a question. Um, do you want to put it in the chat if your microphone won't get off mute? Megan, you can come down. Oh, no question. Okay. Okay, sorry. That's my wife. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. She's upstairs. I'm downstairs. So. That's why. I was like, down, but we're good. All right. All right. Um, but you know, our our goal here is just to make sure that you are as informed as possible, and really, this is an effort to help us identify where we can add resources where a student needs more and and always have sort of our eye on the prize on moving them towards independence when they're ready for it. So um, we hope that this has brought some clarity and um, some, some framework for the IEP season that's ahead of us. Awesome, thank you. Thank you guys. Bye, Bye. thank you everyone.